Hello, good morning. 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 Okay, last time, um, I presented to you a PowerPoint presentation about um, the fields of microbiology and the history. But I, uh, as I can recall, hindi ko siya na-discuss ng maayos yung history ng uh, microbio kasi nagkaroon tayo ng problem. So, uh, I will have a short recall and discussion again of uh, the initial things that I've discussed last time, and then I will continue with the discussion. If ever there will be times that uh, you will not understand the things that I will discuss, you can uh, tell me to stop and uh, repeat again the things that I have discussed so that uh, you will be able to understand uh, the things that I am discussing. Ayoko yung dere-derecho ko nagsasalita, Tapos hindi nyo naman pala naiintindihan. We only meet once a week. So, uh, sana masulit ko naman yung oras na uh, ibinabayad nyo doon sa internet connection and doon sa load. So, sana uh, may matutunan naman doon sa klase ko. Okay? Now, let us start with... Let us start with a prayer. Um, Jerome, are you there? Yes, po. Can you lead us with a prayer? Okay, po. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, please guide us for today. Sana po maging successful po tong araw na to. At uh, marami po kami matutunan this hour. Sana po ay bigi, patuloy niyo po kami bigyan ng mga learnings sa araw-araw. At malagpasan po namin ng maayos po itong pandemic. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you Jerome. Okay, last time na discuss ko yung about uh, COVID-19 and these things and all about introduction about microbiology. So I will have a recap of uh, the history of microbiology that I have discussed last time. Okay, it starts with Hindi niyo ba na? Nakikita niyo ba hindi? Ulit, ulit. Makikita po. Hindi niyo nakikita ng full screen. Ayan na. Okay. Again, it starts with uh, Anton van Leeuwenhoek and his first microscope. So, yung first microscope ni Anton van Leeuwenhoek is very simple. So, it looks like this. But, he was able to see the small organisms. So, nakita niya yung mga microorganisms na yon using that very simple microscope. So, tinawag niya yung animalcules. Bakit? Kasi, uh, at sabi niya, they look like small animals or tiny animals. So, ang tawag niya, animalcules. Later on, uh, in the study of uh, microbiology, we found out na yung nakita niya ay mga protists. Okay, commercial. If ever, there are times na mayroong mga uh, unnecessary noises sa likod ko or naririnig on my background, please pagpasensyahan niyo na kasi uh, hindi ko na siya makontrol. There, um, there are times there will be barkings, there will be yung mga mag- nagtitinda na ko ano-ano, so pagpasensyahan niyo na um, dumadaan sila dyan kapag umaga yung mga nagtitinda ng taho, ng gulay, and other people. So uh, pagpasensyahan niyo na and tell me kapag uh, hindi niyo na ako marinig or maintindihan. Okay? Now, drawings from uh, Leeuwenhoek's notebook, ipinakita niya doon, din drawing niya doon, yung mga nakita niya using the simple microscope. Even yung mga uh, inhabitants nung tooth scrapings niya. So, in-scrape niya yung mga uh, nandun sa ngipin niya and then tinitignan niya rin using his microscope. And then yung observations niya, din drawing niya yon sa notebook niya. So, last time... Um, tinanong ko kayo kung nag arise ba from non-living things yung living things. Because during the time of Aristotle, one of the early scientists, ang sabi niya, um, living things can arise from non-living things. For example, may naiwanan tayong isang maduming damit uh, sa isang lugar. And then nilag- nalagyan siya ng wheat. Okay, yung wheat ang magpo-provide ng nutritive power dun sa shirt and uh, magkakaroon doon ng tinatawag na active principle. Okay? O yung mysterious life force that allowed organisms uh, to, to be alive on those uh, different things. Okay? Ang sabi doon, halimbawa, may naiwanan kang maruming damit, eventually, yung damit na yon magiging daga. Okay? Bakit ganun yung sinasabi nila? Maybe because yun yung nao-observe nila during the time. Halimbawa, may maiwanan kang um, karine or meat. Eventually, magkakaroon siya ng maggots. Yung maggots, yun yung parang mga maliliit na uod na kulay white. Yung maggots na yun ay um, sila yung parang mga baby flies or langaw. Okay, so they believe na mula sa non-living thing, magiging living thing siya. Provided yung active principle or yung nutritive power or meron siyang nutrition. Halimbawa, isang maduming basahan, um, eventually magiging daga yung basahan na yun. 
Okay? Dahil meron siyang nutritive power. So, in the early days, they believed na nangyayari yon mula sa non-living thing, nagiging living thing siya. Kapag binigyan mo siya ng pagkain or nutritive power. But of course, our scientists, hindi sila naniniwala doon. So, there are scientists who tried to disprove na, ah, hindi yan totoo. Hindi totoo na from non-living thing, magiging living things. So, one of them is Francesco Reddy. Francesco Reddy tried to disprove the spontaneous generation theory. Ano yung spontaneous generation theory? Ito yung theory ni Aristotle na from non-living thing, magiging living thing. Okay, spontaneous siya, biglaan siyang uh, nabubuhay from non-living thing. Okay, so tinry ni Francesco Reddy na i-disprove yun, na, na sabihin sa kanilang patunayan sa kanila na hindi yan totoo. So what he did is, naglagay siya ng tatlong jars, gumamit siya ng tatlong jars dun sa experiment niya. Yung isang jar, nilagyan niya ng seal, ng cork. Yung isang jar, hindi niya nilagyan ng seal, so he left it open. The third jar, he put a mesh wire. Yung mesh, um, para siyang yung salaan. Okay, so meron siyang mga holes, pero uh, super small yung mga holes na yun. So what's the result of his experiment? The jar uh, with cover, of course, nilagyan niya ng meat sa loob, hindi siya nagkaroon ng maggots. Yung jar that he left open, Nagkaroon ng maggots. And the jar that he covered with a mesh wire, no maggots appeared. But on top of the mesh wire, the maggots are uh, in there, on the top of the mesh wire. So what was his conclusion? His conclusion is that they, the maggots do not uh, appear spontaneously from the meat. Hindi siya lang biglang lumalabas doon. But, ano, dinadala siya nung flies na doon naglilay ng egg sa meat. Because the jar is covered, the, the flies were not able to enter and lay eggs on the meat. Therefore, walang uh, nakita doon na maggots. On the second jar, the meat ay nakita nila ng mga maggots. And on the third jar, nandun lang sa ibabaw ng mesh wire. So because of this experiment of Francesco Reddy, naniwala naman yung mga tao that Ah, oo nga, hindi siya spontaneously nag-occur. But only for large insects. Okay, so sa mga large insects lang siguro, hindi totoo na uh, nabubuhay sila spontaneously. But when it comes to small organisms such as bacteria, sabi nila, it still arises spontaneously. So, uh, hindi siya completely na-disprove ang spontaneous generation theory. Kasi, uh, kailangan pa nilang patunayan na even microorganisms do not appear uh, spontaneously from nothing. So another scientist named John Needham made an experiment using microorganisms. Okay? Um, ang ginawa niya, nag-boil siya okay? ng broth. Ano yung broth? Yung broth is yung nagsisilbing pagkain ng microorganisms. Uh, isipin nyo na lang yung, uh, li- yung mga broth cubes. Diba? May lasa siyang chicken, lasang beef, lasang pork, and different uh, nutrients na naandon. Okay, so anong ginawa niya? Ilagay niya yun sa water, and then yung broth ang magiging uh, pagkain ng microorganism. Nilagyan niya ng microorganisms, and then binoil niya. Okay. Bakit niya binoil? Binoil niya to ensure na yung microorganisms na naandon ay mamamatay. Boiling kills microorganisms. This is the reason kung bakit uh, kapag halimbawa merong baby sa bahay, yung mga ginagamit ng baby pinapakuluan natin. Especially yung nilalagay niya sa mouth niya. Tulad ng mga bote, yung mga nipples ng, uh, ng bottles, and iba yung mga pacifiers, pinapakuluan. That is to kill microorganisms that may cause harm on the baby. Even water, we boil water to make sure that microorganisms are uh, dead or killed. So, dun sa experiment niya, ganun yung ginawa niya. Binoil niya yung water with the broth. The broth will provide uh, the nutrient for the microorganism and then with microorganism. 
So eventually, ano nangyari? Namatay, of course, yung microorganism na naandon. Okay? So sinabi niya na, okay, binoil ko na to ha. Wala ng microorganism. For sure na naandyan. And para patunayan, kailangan uh, walang mag-arise na microorganism uli doon sa kanyang uh, experiment. But then, what happened is that nag-appear ang microorganism. Okay? Bakit? Kasi the stoppers were loose. Yung takip niya, medyo maluwag. So, naka-enter yung air doon sa kanyang experiment and nakapasok uli ang microorganism. So, si John Needham, although uh, okay naman yung experiment niya, merong naging loophole. So, hindi tinanggap ng mga scientist at ng mga tao during that time na hindi totoo ang spontaneous generation theory with micro... Uh, hindi totoo... Uh, totoo ang, micro ang, ang spontaneous generation theory when it comes to microorganisms. Okay? Anong sinasabi nila? Ah, pag microorganism, bigla na lang yan lumalabas or bigla na lang yan uh, nabubuhay. Okay? So, hindi nagtagumpay si John Needham to disprove the theory of spontaneous generation completely. Until another scientist named Lazaro Spallanzani. Okay, Lazaro Spallanzani is an Italian naturalist. So, hindi siya nag-agree kay Nidham. So, ang ginawa niya, inulit niya yung experiment ni Nidham. Okay, but this time, ano yung naging loophole ni uh, Nidham? Diba? Hindi niya sinil ng maayos yung kanyang flask. So, ang ginawa naman ni Lazaro Spallanzani, after niyang i-boil, sinil niya yung flask niya. Yung isang flask, sinil niya. Yung isang flask ay hinayaan niyang naka-open. Okay? Anong naging result nung kanyang experiment? Yung flask na nakasil ay walang growth ng microorganism. Pero yung flask na hindi nakasil, nagkaroon ng growth ng microorganism. So, uh, in other words, naging tagumpay yung uh, experiment ni Lazaro Spallanzani. Napatunayan niya na, ah, hindi basta-basta nag-grow dun sa uh, jar na nakakover. But then, may mga nagsasabi na um, masyado mo kasing matagal na binoil yung, uh, yung iyong broth. Kaya whatever yung uh, life na naan doon, syempre mamamatay na talaga. The ability of it to give life, wala na. Okay, so saan sabi, na-damage nung boiling kung ano man yung dapat na life force na naan doon. So, ang ginawa niya, inulit niya yung experiment niya. This time, tinime niya. Okay? Inurasan niya yung kanyang experiment. Okay? Anong ginawa niya? 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, and 120 minutes ang ginawa niyang time nung kanyang experiment. Okay? This is to, to provide yung sinasabi nilang time na kailangan para hindi ma-destroy agad ang a life force na naandun sa flask. So, same thing, yung isang flask sinara niya, yung isang flask he left open. What was the result? The results are the same, no matter gano'n niya katagal, binoil ang flask. Lahat ng flask na nakasil ay walang microorganism. Lahat ng flask na naka-open, nagkaroon ng microorganism. Okay? So, what happened? Kahit gano'ng katagal, binoil, hindi niya naapektuhan yung capability or ability nung, uh, nung broth niya to give life. The only difference is yung nakasil, walang microorganism. Yung nakalose, uh, may microorganism. Kay tinanggap ba ng mga tao or ng other scientists yung kanyang uh, results? Still, hindi siya tinanggap. Bakit? Ang sabi ng mga tao, dahil daw, or other scientists, dahil daw nakatakip ng gusto or very tight yung seal ng flask. Hindi nakapasok yung element which is very vital in living things. Ano yon? That's air. Of course, living things need air for us to be able to live. Kahit tayo, pag tinanggalan mo tayo ng oxygen, hindi na tayo mabubuhay. Okay? So, ang sabi nila, kaya naman 
walang nabuhay na kahit anong microorganism doon sa sa isang flask na naka-tight seal is because wala siyang air. And air is very uh, essential to support life. Until the time of Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur used a different flask. Okay, ang ginamit niya is a flask na letter S yung dulo or swan neck flask. Bakit? Masyadong mahaba yung dulo niya at yung neck niya ay medyo manipis at yung dulo niya hindi niya nasinil. Okay, this is to provide the air na kailangan ng microorganisms for, is, for it to survive. Kasi yun yung naging problem nung uh, experiment ni Spallanzani. Hindi niya binigyan ng air. So, ang ginawa niya, he, uh, he boiled the broth. Same thing ng ginawa ni Spallanzani. But this time, after niyang i-boil, hindi niya tinakpan. What happened? Kahit hindi niya tinakpan yung kanyang flask, walang growth ng microorganism. So, hindi nag-grow ang microorganism. Okay, what happened? It means that uh, nakakapasok yung air kasi nakabukas naman, pero hindi enough para dalhin niya yung microorganism doon sa mismong broth. It actually took years na walang kahit anong microorganism na nag-grow doon sa flask ni Louis Pasteur. And then what he did is he tilted the flask. After years, he tilted the flask and eventually nakapasok yung microorganism and it gave life to microorganisms. Also, another experiment is pinutol niya naman yung um, dulo ng flask na yan. Nung pinutol niya yung dulo ng flask na yan, agad-agad nakapasok yung microorganisms and nagkaroon ng growth ng microorganisms. So, uh, this experiment, hindi na siya nakontra ng ibang scientists. He was able to squash the idea of a biogenesis or spontaneous generation completely. Since then, no one has been able to refute his experiment. And this uh, is the end ng spontaneous generation theory or tinatawag din nating a biogenesis. Now, sinong may question? Anybody who has a question regarding the things that I have discussed about spontaneous generation theory and how it was um, disproved by different scientists? Miss me question. Yes, Pa. Yung, abi yung abiogenesis po ba, nagbago po siya since nung nung na patunayan po ni Pasteur na hindi po totoo yung spontaneous generation. Nag-iba po yes. siya sa biogenesis po pa siya. Yes, that will be the continuation of my discussion. Okay po. Thank you po. Wala namang may question? Miss, ako po. Yes po. Miss, paano Sharing. po? Ano, ano pong pagkakaiba nun sa nakadiretsyong swan plus dun sa pagkatilt sa nung tinilt na po ni pasture paano po nakapasok yung microorganism doon possible kasi na ang microorganism hanggang dun lang sa pinakadulo nung um nung flask niya okay dahil nandun sa dulo nung itinilt niya nag-move ng konti yung liquid Okay, if ever you have experience, pag tinilt mo yung tubig, eh, yung baso ng tubig na merong um, tubig, of course, pag tinilt mo siya, syempre mag-move yung water sa loob. And possible na kung ano man yung microorganism na nandun sa medyo taas nung baso, magkakaroon siya ng contact with um, the broth or nung water na naandun. Okay? So, anong nangyari? Dahil tinilt niya, nag-move yung liquid, yung broth, and then nagkaroon siya ngayon ng contact doon sa microorganism or doon sa dust na may, dal na may kasamang microorganism. Thank you, Paul. 
questions? This part is very essential for you to do, to understand what happened in our in the history of microbiology. Miss, meron po yes, bang sumunod pa diyan kay ano? Meron kay, pa. Ah, meron pa po. Louis Pasteur? Opo. Yes. Okay. So, wala na kayong question regarding the early um, discussions or early experiments. We go to the next one. Okay. Another experiment by Theodore Swan. His experiment is, ang ginawa niya naman, he passed through a red hot tube before entering the flask with nutrient solution. So, ang ginawa niya, bago, niya ipa, bago dumaan sa uh, pumunta sa flask, yung nutrient solution pinadaan niya sa red hot tube. So, yung red hot tube naman ang naging parang um, nag-sterilize doon sa liquid broth. Kaya hindi siya uh, namatay yung microorganism na naandon. So, what was the result? Nagkaroon ng, uh, nagkaroon ng sterilization. So, hindi nag-grow ang microorganism uh, doon sa ginawa niyang experiment. Also, because of this discovery of um, Louis Pasteur, he was termed as the father of modern microbiology. Another scientist named George Schroeder and Theodore von Dodge had experiments wherein they passed uh, their nutrient solution through a sterile cotton wool. Okay. So, ang result is no growth. So, yung concept na yan, ginagamit pa rin until today or filtration na ginagamit pa rin until today sa mga um, hospitals and uh, other medical institutions na gumagamit ng uh, microorganisms. So, ang ginamit naman ni na Schroeder and Tudor Von Dodge ay sterile cotton wool. Okay, if you do not have any questions, I will go to uh, the next part of my discussion, which is about, uh, about biogenesis. Were you able to read and finish worksheet number three? Nabasa nyo ba yung worksheet number three natin? Tapos na po. Okay. Worksheet number three is about Cox postulates and other um, scientists who contributed in the study of microbiology as a science. But we focus on Cox postulates. Dahil na disprove ni Louis Pasteur ang theory ng abiogenesis or theory of spontaneous generation, syempre merong alternative na theory. This theory is known as biogenesis. It was pro proposed by um, German scientist Rudolf Virchow. Okay, so ito yung itsura niya. He is the one who challenged spontaneous generation with this concept ng biogenesis. So ito, syempre, kabaligtaran naman siya nung abiogenesis or spontaneous generation. Ang sabi niya, living things arise only from pre-existing life. Or living things arise only, of course, from other living things. Virtual presented the idea to the scientific community but could not back it up with a convincing experiment. So, dahil nga um, dun sa experiments ni na Pasteur, so napatunayan, so ito yung tinanggap ngayon na um, alternative hypothesis, which is biogenesis. So, sa kanya yung theory ng biogenesis, pero hindi kasi siya nag-experiment about it, ang nakapag-disprove uh, ng theory ng spontaneous generation ay si Louis Pasteur. But, the theory of biogenesis, the concept, is proposed by Rudolf Virchow, which says that living things arise only from pre-existing life or pre-existing living things. Okay, a French scientist, Louis Pasteur, he was the one who demonstrated that 
hindi nga possible ang spontaneous generation. And he was termed as the father of modern microbiology and father of medical microbiology. So ito yung sinasabi ko kanina experiment niya. In one of his experiments, he broke the neck of the flask. Okay, and eventually nagkaroon ng microorganism. And this uh, put an end to the spontaneous generation theory. The next years ay tinatawag na golden age of microbiology. Bakit? Kasi dito nagkaroon ng maraming um, experiments, maraming discoveries by different scientists. So 1960 to 19, uh, 1860 to 1900s, is often named as the golden age of microbiology. During this period, rapid advances spearheaded by Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch. This is read as Coke, as in yung iniinom na Coke or soft drink. Led to the establishment of microbiology as a science. So, uh, during this time, si Louis Pasteur at saka si Robert Koch, sila yung parang uh, magkakompetensya. Paramihan sila ng Uh, discoveries, paramihan sila ng um, experiments and accomplishments during this time. So, sila yung uh, magkakompetensya during this uh, age of microbiology. There is another theory named as the germ theory of disease. This germ theory of disease states that specific microorganisms are the cause of specific diseases. So, sinabi dito sa theory na to na kung uh, isang disease ay meron siyang uh, isang organism na nagkukos sa kanya. For example, um, COVID disease or coronavirus disease 2019 is caused by a specific microorganism which is coronavirus uh, 19, 2019. So, this golden age of microbiology started with Pasteur's work, discoveries including the relationship between microbes and disease, which is also known as the germ theory, immunity, and antimicrobial medicine. So, itong golden age of microbiology nito, na to ay nagumpisa talaga sa mga works ni Louis Pasteur. He discovered pasteurization which lead Pasteur to introduce the germ theory of disease. So, yung pasteurization, if uh, you already have an idea, ginagawa to in, um, in the production of milk and other dairy products. Bakit? Uh, when we say pasteurize, ibig sabihin, iniinit natin yung, um, yung liquid at a temperature na mamamatay ang microorganism, usually at around 70 degrees Celsius. Ito yung reason, halimbawa, um, if ever may handaan or pagkain na natira, di ba, anong ginagawa ng nanay nyo para hindi siya masira? Iniinit siya uli. Okay? Di ba, minsan inaabot pa nga ng pangat, as in pangatlong araw na init or pangatlong init. Okay? The concept is, uh, the, the concept is about pasteurization. Named after, of course, Louis Pasteur, who discovered na at a certain temperature, yung liquid na yan, or yung food na yan, ay uh, mapapatay ang microorganism. Okay? Pero hindi natin siya iaalaw na mag-boil. Kasi possible naman na mag-evaporate naman yung liquid at a boiling point, of course. So, pasteurization is um, heating at a temperature which will kill the microorganisms. Okay, it was discovered and uh, it, it led to the discovery of the germ theory of disease in 1864. Pasteur stated that diseases are caused by the growth of microbes in the body and not by sins, bad character, or poverty, etc. Okay, of course, during that time, uh, pinaniniwalaan nila na kaya nagkakasakit yung mga tao kasi makasalanan siya, masama ugali niya, or dahil mahirap siya. Kaya nagkakaroon ng sakit. But Louis Pasteur having the scientist uh, attitude, ang sabi niya, possi merong possible cause yung uh, 
disease na yun, it's because of the growth of these microorganisms in the body. At hindi dahil sa ating sins or bad character or poverty. He established the relationship between microbes and diseases in preventing wine from spoiling by using the process termed pasteurization. This process kills bacteria in the alcohol by heat, thus preventing the formation of acetic acid or vinegar. So also sa wine, pinapasteurize din ang wine para hindi siya masigra. Okay? Uh, in my early uh, microbio classes, in the past microbio classes, we do pasteurization. Gumagawa kami ng wine. Okay? And then, pinapasteurize namin yun. And then, um, we were able to um, come up with a fruit wine. And then, uh, may alcoholic content na yun. Actually, after four years, pinatikim namin siya with uh, the seniors. And then, okay naman yung naging uh, lasa ng aming experiment. But then, of course, the school year, uh, titignan natin if you will be uh, able to do it on your homes or maybe early next year kapag pwede na tayo mag-meet at mag-experiment. Louis Pasteur performed numerous experiments to discover why wine and dairy products become sour. He found that bacteria were to blame. It, uh, it causes lactic acid fermentation. So, uh, dahil doon, kasi, uh, kaya, siya, kaya niya na-invent ang pasteurization is because lagi siyang nag-wonder bakit nasisira yung wine and yung dairy products. And then, nalaman niya na dahil yun sa bacteria. And kaya natin pinapasteurize ang wine and dairy products is to kill this bacteria na nagkukos ng lactic acid fermentation or uh, it uh, the causes it to become sour. Pasteur called the attention to the importance of microorganisms in everyday life and steered scientists to think that if bacteria could make the wine sick, then perhaps they could cause human illness. So because of this in uh, observation na uh, kay, kaya, niya, kaya niyang gawing sour yung wine and other dairy products or kaya niyang maging sick or masira yung mga products na yan, possible na kaya niya rin gawin yun sa mga tao and mag ng sakit. So, he showed that microbes are responsible for fermentation. And microbial growth is also responsible for spoilage of food. So, yan din yung reason kung bakit nasisira yung pagkain. Okay? And also, yan nga yung, as, as I mentioned earlier, kaya iniinit natin yung pagkain is to kill microorganisms that might be uh, cause, that might cause spoilage and might cause disease dun sa kakain ng uh, food na yon. He discovered that weak forms of disease could be used as an immunization against stronger forms and that rabies was transmitted by viruses too small to be seen under the microscope of the time. So during that time, um, na-discover niya na na pwede mag-immunize. Ano yun? Uh, pwede mag-vaccinate. Ibig sabihin, mula doon sa mga viruses na nagkukos ng sakit, gagamitin niya yung weak form nun. So, mas mahinang form nun para uh, i-activate ang immune system ng katawan to produce antibodies against these viruses. So, he developed vaccines for anthrax and rabies. Okay? Siya ang nakadiscover ng vaccine sa anthrax. Anthrax is caused by a bacteria and rabies is caused by virus. Kaya yung mga nakakagat ng aso, di ba, during the time, sabi, or actually until now, gumagamit sila ng bawang. Sabi, natatanggal ng bawang yung rabies uh, virus. But it's not true. Okay, kapag nakagat ng dog na hindi natin alam na kung rabid ba or hindi, dapat magpapavaccinate. Kasi it's the vaccine that will trigger um, our immune system to produce these antibodies against the, vaccine, uh, the virus. Another scientist named Robert Koch proved the germ theory of disease by showing na bacteria is actually caused by diseases. 
Koch established a sequence of experimental steps for directly relating a specific microbe to a specific disease. And ang tawag niya doon ay Koch's postulates. Okay? Si Robert Koch, isa uh, sa ginawa niya is pinatunayan niya na totoo yung theory ni Louis Pasteur na isang disease ay nagkukos ng isang sakit. Okay? Si, he established a sequence of experimental steps or tinatawag natin Koch's postulates para patunayan yon. Yung Koch's postulates meron siyang four steps. As I uh, as was uh, in in your worksheet number three, nakasulat to don. Number one is pathogen must be present in all cases of the disease. Sorry, wrong spelling. Okay, ibig sabihin halimbawa yung mga taong may rabies, lahat ng taong nagkarabies dapat makikitaan ng rabies virus. Okay, the pathogen must be present in all the cases of the disease. And pathogen must be isolated and grown in a lab in pure culture. So, ang gagawin, kukuhanin siya doon sa taong nagkasakit or doon sa animal na nagkasakit at i-isolate siya at i-grow mo siya sa laboratory. Okay, the pathogen from pure cultures must cause the disease when inoculated into a healthy, susceptible animal. So, anong kasunod? Uh, kinuha mo siya doon sa taong may sakit or sa animal na may sakit, igugro mo siya sa laboratory para dumami, and then yung pure culture niya, ilalagay mo naman sa isang animal na healthy, okay na walang sakit. And you should be able to expect na yung animal na nilagyan mo ng um, pathogen na yon ay magkakasakit the same na sakit nung nauna. Okay? When we say pathogen, These are organisms, microorganisms that can cause disease. Okay, pag sinabi nating pathogen, sila yung mga microorganisms na nagdadala ng sakit. Okay? In illustrations, okay, the first step, dapat merong isang organism na merong sakit. And then kukuhanin mo sa kanya yung uh, pathogen na na-suspected mo na yun yung nagkakos ng sakit sa kanya. Igogrow mo siya sa laboratory, and then kapag dumami na siya, mag, uh, yung pure culture niya, ilalagay mo sa isang animal, which is healthy. Okay? Pag inilagay mo siya dun sa isang animal na healthy, you should expect na magkakasakit din yung animal na yon. And kapag nagkasakit yung animal na yon at kinuha mo yung causative agent ng sakit niya, dapat parehas na microorganism yung makuha mo. Okay? These are the uh, Cox postulates na ang sinasabi niya, ang organism, uh, or ang diseases ay caused by a certain type ng organism, ng microorganism. Okay. Ulitin ko, pathogen must be present in all cases of the disease. Okay? And then, pathogen must be isolated, kukuhanin mo, and then, igugrow mo siya in the laboratory as a pure culture. After that, you will get a healthy animal and inject that pathogen on that healthy animal. And you should be able to expect that the animal will develop the signs and symptoms of the disease and then kapag in-isolate mo uli ano yung nag-cause ng sakit sa kanya dapat parehas yung makukuha mong microorganism sa kanya okay this is to establish that a certain disease is caused by a specific microorganism so this is Koch's postulates questions Anybody who has a question regarding Koch's postulates? Miss? Yes. Meron po ako. Jeline. Miss, if I'm not mistaken po, hindi po ba, hindi po applicable sa lahat ng diseases yung postulates niya? Yes. There are exemptions to Koch's postulates. Um, for example, some uh, microorganisms cannot be grown in uh, the laboratory. 
Okay? Hindi lahat ng microorganism kaya nating i-grow sa laboratory, especially viruses. Okay? For example, um, those viruses that will only grow also on human. So, hindi mo siya maaaral. And there are some uh, microorganisms na nagre-require ng uh, animals or organisms na hindi madaling makita or ma pwedeng basta gamitin. Okay? So, there are exemptions to Koch postulates, but um, general, generally, for most diseases, uh, it applies. Thank you po. Okay, questions? Miss? Yes, ma'am. Hindi po ba naging against yung church sa research nila? Of course, there will always be um, a ethical issues with the church regarding um, experiments, of course, with the use of laboratory animals. But um, katulad ng ginagawa ngayon kasi um, kapag gumagawa, gumagamit ka ng lab animal in uh, experiments, nagsesecure ngayon ng permit okay, from the government na gagamit ka ng lab animal. Kaya when you do your research, um, gagamit kayo ng lab animal, maraming permit na kailangan mong kuhanin. Kasi hindi ba sa pwedeng gumamit yan. But during the time, medyo patago yan. Okay? Tin actually, may mga experiments ngayon na sinasabi nila na tinatago din na ginagawa, na nag experiment sa humans. Before, Ginagawa talaga nila yan, hindi sila nanghihingi ng permit sa church or from other uh, government institutions uh, dahil hindi naman parang mag malaking issue during the time. Okay? Although possible na hindi nag-agree ang church with this um, experiments, hindi siya naging malaking issue during the time. Until uh, now, in the, early, in the next uh, generations, nagkaroon na siya ng mga issues kasi uh, maraming experiments na kinandak na sa mga tao, especially sa mga prisoners. Dati ang ginagamit nilang uh, experimental animal ay mga, yung mga nakakulong. Kasi they are um, deprived of their liberty, so sila yung pinag experimentohan But, of course, there are ethical issues Pero during the time, hindi pa siya masyadong uh, pinapansin. Pero ngayon, mas marami ng kailangan yung permit when you do this um, experiments. Questions? Thank you po. Yes. Miss yes, Francis. Yung sa mga exemptions po ng postulates, paano pa rin po napoprove sila na may kinalaman pa rin po sila sa sakit? Um, dahil exemption sila, hindi sila fully um, na napag-experimentohan. But of course, there are experiments related doon. Pero hindi siya fully talaga uh, na napag-experimentohan or naaaral kasi nga merong mga specific conditions na kailangan. But still, there are experiments na nagawa regarding uh, these exemptions. Kaya lang, hindi sa uh, nag apply talaga on Cox postulates na pwedeng ulit-ulitin mo yung process kasi nga, special yung conditions na hinihingi nila. Halimbawa na lang yung HIV. Um, this virus, hindi mo siya pwedeng basa ulit-ulitin using the Cox postulates kasi nga, it requires a human para pag-aralan. Okay? Unless may mga tao na pumapayag, katulad ng mga AIDS patients or HIV patients, na pumapayag sila as uh, sila yung maging uh, parang experimental lab animals na sila yung pag experimentohan But of course, uh, hindi madaling gawin yun. Pero there are instances na nagagawa siya. Thank you po. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Um basis Okay 
uh, for now, I don't know kung may ginagamit silang ibang um, alternative. Pero ito kasi yung generally uh, accepted. Possible na gumagamit sila ng ibang uh, techniques. Pero itong Cox postulates kasi, uh, it requires na uulitin mo siya. Kukuhanin mo siya, ilalagay mo siya sa panibagong uh, organism. Possible yon na nagagawa nila yon pero uh, possible na hindi siya hindi siya pwedeng ulit-ulitin. So limited lang siya yung experiment na yon. Kasi possible na halimbawa yung virus uh, nilagay mo siya sa isang tao. Para mapatunayan mo na yun yung naging cause ng sakit niya, kailangan ilagay mo siya sa isang healthy person or healthy uh, individual. Of course, sino ba naman yung papayag? Diba? It will cause ethical issues na um, para magawa mo yun. Kaya until now, actually, there are limitations when it comes to studying some type of viruses and some type of organisms. Kasi, of course, kailangan il ilagay mo siya sa isang healthy animal or healthy individual. And these viruses, hindi mo siya pwedeng basta ilagay sa animal. Kailangan sa tao. And of course, sino ba naman yung healthy na tao na papayag na lagyan mo siya ng HIV, di ba? Yes. So until now, of course, there are um, experiments, there are studies na ginagawa, kinakandak regarding these things, pero limited pa siya. Kaya until now, uh, even yung uh, nalalaman natin is limited because of these limitations. Questions? Questions? Sige, wag kayo mayang magtanong kasi hindi naman ako magagalit. Mas gusto ko yung nagtatanong kayo kaysa dera-daresya ako dumadal tapos wala naman kayo nang intindihan. Our topic is uh, hard. It requires a lot of memorization. But please, I, I want you to understand the different um, concepts behind this um, terminologies. Kasi kung i-memorize nyo lang yan, hindi nyo siya naintindihan, baliwala. Miss, to clarify lang po. Yes. Baka masagot na po rin yung worksheet eh. Yung mm -hmm. sa, di ba po, mayroon pong tension sa countries ni Pastor at saka ni, ni Coke. So, mm -hmm. bali parang na siguro po kaya sila naging successful kasi na-pressure sila para magpaligsahan sa mga discoveries po. Ganun. Yes, actually, um, nagpaparamihan sila ng discoveries. Uh, parang alibaw sa classroom, di ba? Um, paramihan kayo ng, ng achievements, paramihan kayo ng uh, mapapatunayan, pa pagalingan kayo, and then of course, isa lang yung mag arise na pinakamagaling sa inyo. So during that time, paramihan sila ng achievements, of course, and kasi binibigyan ng Nobel Prize yung mga, uh, yung mga discoveries na yan. So the same thing with them, dahil sila ay magkakompetensya, pagalingan sila that time, syempre paramihan sila ng kanilang uh, experiments, ng kanilang achievements. Okay, panoted, miss. Mm -mm. Ay, miss, kasali po ba yung kay Snow po dito? Or sa next lesson pa po natin yung i-discuss? Actually, kasunod nung mga discoveries nila. Okay po, thank you po. Si John Snow kasi it's about uh, specific type of disease na cholera naman. Na kumalat doon sa kanyang uh, neighborhood. Wala na kayong question about the Koch's postulates? Okay, in 1860, Robert Cook also developed an elaborate technique to isolate and identify specific pathogens. Ito yung tinatawag na natin Cook's postulates. He developed pure culture methods wherein you will be able to um, isolate pure cultures or pure bacteria. He was able to identify the cause of anthrax, which is Bacillus anthrax or Bacillus anthracis. 
the uh, he was able also to identify the causative agent of TB or tuberculosis, which is Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and the causative agent of cholera, which is Vibrio cholerae or Vibrio cholera. So, ito yung uh, mga achievements naman ni Robert Koch. So, na-identify niya yung causative agents ng iba't ibang sakit because nga doon sa kanyang Koch's postulates. So, dahil yun yung ginamit niya, inulit-ulit niya yung experiment na yun, and then he was able to identify the causative agents of diseases such as anthrax, tuberculosis, and cholera. Other accomplishments of Robert Koch include he is credited to be one of the founders of the specific field of mo modern bacteriology. He identified specific, specific causative agents of tuberculosis, tuberculosis, cholera, and anthrax. He gave experimental support for the concept of infectious diseases, which included experiments on humans and animals. He is regarded as pioneer of public health, aiding legislation, and changing prevailing attitudes about hygiene to prevent the spread of various infectious diseases. For his work on tuberculosis, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1905 in physiology. He observed the phenomenon of acquired immunity. He developed media suitable for growing bacteria isolated from the body. The result was the development of nutrient broth and nutrient agar media that are still in wide use today. So, tumulong siya sa pag-develop uh, ng nutrient broth or nutrient agar. Ito yung ginagamit na natin sa mga laboratories ngayon uh, in growing microorganisms. The medical ap applications of biotechnology still heavily depends on the Koch's principles of affirming the cause of infectious diseases. So, si Robert Koch naman, yung kanyang discoveries is more on um, infectious diseases. So, marami din siyang naging uh, mga discoveries just like Louis Pasteur. After that, Nagkaroon din ng mga iba't ibang discoveries, yung iba't ibang mga tao, such as Agustino Basi. He showed that a silkworm disease was caused by a fungus. Meron din na-discover si Louis Pasteur na isa pang silkworm disease na ang cause naman niya ay protozoan. Okay? And another is Ignaz Semmelweis. Ignaz Semmelweis is an obigaini. Okay? Yung, uh, ang nangyari during the time ni Ignaz Semmelweis is that napansin niya na nagkakaroon ng transmission ng peripheral fever from one OB patient to another. Ano yon? Yung peripheral fever, usually nangyayari to kapag nagkakaroon ng uh, infection yung nanay na bagong panganak and then, nagkukos yan ng uh, sepsis and eventually death. Napansin niya na uh, after nilang magpaanak ng isang patient or mag-operate from one OB patient uh, to another, nagkakaroon ng transmission ng peripheral fever. So, ang ginawa niya, um, sinabi niya na baka kailangan every time we go from one patient to another, nagkakaroon ng hand washing. That is, baka mamaya dun sa, uh, from one patient to another, yung, dahil hindi sila nagkakaroon uh, ng proper hand washing, uh, naitatransfer siya yung sakit or yung microorganism that causes the disease. So, he advocated hand washing to prevent the transmission of fever from one OB patient to another. So, siya ang advocate ng hand washing na until now, uh, ini-spread pa rin natin that is very important to prevent the transmission of diseases such as COVID-19, di ba? Hinasabi nila yan na kailangan mag-hand washing ng matagal, kakanta ka muna, 
ng happy birthday song bago ka matapos mag-wash uh, ng hands mo or magsabon ng hands mo to prevent transmission of these microorganisms from one person to another. So, ang nag-advocate niyan ay si Egna, Ignas Semmelweis. Another is another surgeon, Joseph Lister. If you are familiar with the product Listerine, so pinangalan yun kay Joseph Lister. Okay, Listerine is an antiseptic. Ginagamit yan as a mouthwash. Okay, so yung Listerine na yan, galing yan sa pangalan ni Joseph Lister, and he is the father of antiseptic surgery. So siya rin, ay isang doctor, he is a surgeon, and he used a chemical disinfectant known as carboxylic acid to prevent surgical wound infections after reading Pasteur's work showing that microbes are in the air, can spoil food, and cause animal diseases. So si Joseph Lister is another person who contributed sa, sa uh, microbiology by advocating Uh, antiseptic surgery. So, kaya gumagamit ngayon sa mga, antisep ng mga antiseptics kapag um, nag-ooperate ng patients. Okay, my discussion is only until Joseph Lister. Itutuloy natin to next week. We will have one hour asynchronous class that will be on Saturday. I will give you a graded um, worksheet starting from the from the earliest works of Louis uh, of Anton van Leeuwenhoek until Joseph Lister. Okay? Anong kailangan yung ipasa? Wala kayong kailangang ipasa sa akin maliban sa worksheet number 3. Yung nakapagpasa na okay na yon. You just prepare for a graded worksheet on Saturday. So reviewin niyo lang yung mga nandun sa worksheet niyo. Questions? Miss, isend niyo po yung PowerPoint. Ah, uh, pwede naman. Sige, hindi pa tapos actually yung discussion ko. Pero isa-send ko sa inyo para ma-review nyo. Yung mga kailangan nyo review. O, doon nandun naman to sa worksheets nyo. Sige, I will send it on our group chat. Questions? No more Questions? If you do not have any more questions, then I will end my discussion. Please prepare for a graded worksheet on Saturday, 8 to 9. Okay? That will be all for today. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Thank and you have po. a nice day. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank, po. Po. Thank you, Paul. Have a nice day, Paul, Miss. Okay. Thank you, Paul.